So a residual is our observed value minus what we'd expect, our predicted value. So from the day 22 problem, the tree that was 14 feet tall had an avocado yield of 974. Now using our equation from that problem, we can calculate what we'd expect the yield for a 14 foot tree to be. So our predicted yield is 21.39 times 14 feet uh, plus 231.91. So our predicted yield is 531.4 approximately. So our residual is 442.63 pounds. Now a positive residual means this tree had a higher yield than we'd expect. So we can say the 14 foot tree had an avocado yield of 442.63 pounds over what our model would predict. We're gonna use our calculator to help us make the residual plot. If we press stat and then edit, we already input all of the avocado tree heights in list one and all the yields in list two. Then if you press stat and calculate and go down to linear regression, we can calculate our model. So there's our slope and y-intercept. Now we're gonna calculate a residual plot. So to do this, press the stat button and then enter on edit. Now in list one is all of our tree heights and in list two is the yields we saw for each of those tree heights. These are the actual observed values. So in list three, we want the expected values. So for each tree height in list one, what would our equation predict the yield would be? That's what we want in list three. So to do this, press up. Now list three is highlighted and this is our function bar down here. So if you press VARS and you go down to statistics, and you go over to equation, the first option is reg equation, our regression equation. So when we press enter there, it actually pastes our regression equation right down in the function bar. Now the only thing we need to do is see where this X is? We need to replace that with list one. So we'll highlight X and press second one. And what that's gonna do is take each of our tree heights in list one, multiply it by our slope, and then add our Y intercept. So when I press enter, here's all of our predicted values or our expected values. Now we're ready to calculate the residuals. A residual is the observed value minus the expected value. So our observed values are in list two and I'm gonna subtract the expected values in list three. So to type any list, just press second and then the list number. So I did second two minus sign and then second three for this command. Now I'm gonna press enter. All right, there's all of our residuals. Now a negative residual means we observed less than what our model would predict, where a positive residual means we had a higher yield than what our model would predict for that tree height. Now let's make the residual plot. I'm gonna press second and Y equals to get to the stat plot menu. And I'm going to press enter on plot one. On a residual plot, the x-axis is gonna be our explanatory variable. So in this case, it's tree height. So we'll leave list one there. Our vertical axis is gonna be the residual. So I'm gonna change this to list four, which is where our residuals are stored. Now if I press zoom and then the number nine, here's my residual plot. And you may notice it's actually very similar to the original scatter plot, just rotated so that the model line is horizontal. Now, if we have to copy this down, we're gonna need some of these values. So there's a trick. If you press this trace button right here, as you scroll through, it will show you the X and Y coordinates of these different points. The only bummer is it does it in list order right now. So it kind of jumps from point to point all over the place, but it will give you some idea of what scale to use when you copy down this residual plot. But since we have the plot on our calculator screen, we're gonna jump right to describing it. So for our description, I'm gonna say the residual plot shows random scatter through the various tree heights. When we look at the residual plot, the scatter seems random. And the x-axis is our tree heights, and I don't see the residuals either increasing or decreasing as tree height increases or decreases. So it's a random scatter, that's a good sign. Another good sign is most our residuals seem fairly small. With the exception of these two right here, most of the residuals are pretty close to the line. That means our model gets fairly close to predicting the actual yield. 
I am going to talk about these two values. These are from trees of heights 14 and 16. And since they're large positive residuals, it means our model underpredicted their yield substantially. But overall, a linear model seems quite appropriate. Now the formula for calculating r squared and s is pretty complicated, but we already have the data stored in the calculator. So here's what we're going to do. First press mode, and hopefully your calculator has this. If you go down, there's something called stat diagnostic, and you want to turn that on. Now press second quit to get out of that screen, and push the stat button, go to calculate, and we're going to rerun our linear regression, option 4 here. Now we see some extra output. We have r, which is our correlation, and r squared. So we'll write down r squared. And r squared has a really neat interpretation. As you look at the original scatter plot, you can see that the yield varied quite a bit. There's a lot of variation in yield. Well, how much of that variation, what percent of that variation, can be explained by the tree height? That's what r squared measures. So we'll say about 41.75% of the variation in yield can be explained by tree height. To calculate s, press stat and go over to the test menu. Now option F on my calculator is lin reg t test. If you click that, and for x list you use list 1 and y list list 2, ignore everything else and just press calculate. Now right here at the bottom, this is our s value, and you're actually going to learn what all these other things are later in your statistics course. But right now let's just focus on that s value. Now s is actually a standard deviation of the residuals, and to interpret it, we'll say the average error when predicting yield from tree height using our least squares regression equation is about 155.302 pounds. R squared measures the strength of the relationship between two variables, so changing the units would not affect its value. S, however, is measured in the same units as the response variable, and changing units in either the explanatory or the response variable would cause its value to change. If you liked this video and want to learn more about scatter plots, least squares regression, residuals, and how to use your calculator, check out this playlist. Lots of students have found the first video on the playlist particularly helpful.